Okay, we finally made it, the Neo Saban era. Now the Neo Saban era was an interesting era of Power Rangers. It started with Haim Saban buying back the brand from Disney, which was kind of a big deal because Disney had given up on Power Rangers as they realized it was failing as a boys brand and they moved on to bigger and better things. So with Power Rangers now back in the hands of Mr. Haim Saban, where would the franchise go? Well, needless to say, Saban didn't fuck around when buying back the brand. There was marketing, merch, and Power Rangers even had a contract with Nickelodeon at the time that would last for 10 whole years. Now, despite what your opinions are on Samurai and the Neo Saban era, this era of Power Rangers would be many people's first exposure to the brand and started kind of a Power Rangers renaissance back in the day. So the sentai they chose to adapt was Shinkenja. Now, Shinkenja is a very Japanese heavy sentai, where Japanese culture is rooted into the show. So, what was executive producer Jonathan Tazor's big plan? Well, when the staff were writing episodes, Jonathan had this to say. Shinkenja is a great show. Why change it so much? And this was one of the many things we would learn about Tazor from an interview with James W. Bates, who worked on the show. Now, hearing that quote from Jonathan explains a lot about Samurai. It explains why Samurai is basically four kids Shinkenja, and why so many of the exact same plot lines and story arcs are copied and pasted from the Sentai into Samurai. But we'll talk about Tazor another day once we get to Mega Force and Super Mega Force. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about monsters that were cut down from Power Rangers Samurai, and you only saw if you watched Shinkenja. So first up is Chino Monaco and Sasamataje. These monsters were skipped because it involved a crossover between Kamen Rider Decade and Shinkenja, but funny enough, Saban did trademark Power Rider back in the day, meaning Saban did have plans to revive Masked Rider or bring back Kamen Rider to the States after Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, which is kind of a good thing because after what Saban did to Masked Rider, Back in the 90s, no one wants to see that ever again, so I'm kind of glad he just let this idea sit on the shelf and let the idea phase out. So next up is Naniki Ki, I probably butchered that. Now this is an interesting monster lore-wise because I can understand why it was skipped. So this monster is based on a yokai, and most of the monsters in Shinkenja were based on yokai, but this one is called Konaki Jiji, a yokai that takes the appearance that sounds like a crying baby, but when picked up by people passing by, he then latches onto their victims and becomes so heavy that he crushes them. So, in this episode, this monster summons Oniko that latches onto their victims, so basically it's people in white morph suits that sort of follow the adults around. Now, watching this episode, I can understand why it was skipped, because it was mostly unmorphed footage that was focusing on the Japanese actors and it was very very Japanese lore heavy so I can understand why they was why they skipped it but I'm surprised they skipped it but they probably couldn't find anything to do with it because it is a wacky silly goofy episode and they probably couldn't find any way to work around the unmorphed fight footage but what also sucks about this episode not getting adapted, it was a great Yellow Ranger and Pink Ranger focused episode where they work together and form a bond in the episode. And that would have been great character development for Emily and Mia to have in the episode. They got along in the show, but it would have been great to see these two get a focused episode together if they adapted it. So I feel like it was kind of a missed opportunity there. Now this monster, this monster, they were skipping for sure. So next up is Hachujin. I probably butchered that name as well. This monster is from a very, I want to say iconic episode of Shinkencha because it introduced Shinken Brown, aka Richard Brown. And Shinken Brown or Richard plays a big focus in the episode even getting involved in the roll call with the Shinkenjas. So this episode probably was impossible for them to work around and trying to adapt because Jonathan leaned heavy on the Sentai footage when working on Samurai. And seeing how this episode leaned heavy with Richard in the fight scenes with the Shinkenjas morphed, there was probably no doubt about it they were going to skip this episode. Alright, this one's weird. Urawadachi. This monster possessed clothes. 
So this episode heavily leaned focus on the Japanese footage, but also the monster has a crush on the Yellow Ranger. And like I said, they possess clothes, so I think this one was weird, too weird, even by Power Ranger standards. Alright, last monster on the list, well kind of, sort of, we've got the movie monster to talk about, is Kugu Siyaki. I probably butchered that name as well. But I can understand why this monster was skipped, because the whole premise of this episode takes place inside of a school. A Japanese school. So, no doubt about it, of course, this episode was probably impossible for them to work around with the plot of the Shinkenger episode. So, this one was probably skipped for obvious reasons, because even the fight scenes with the monster takes place inside of the school here and there. So, I can understand why this monster was skipped. Okay, last on the list is Madaka Kamoda. Featured in the Goseija vs. the Shinkenja movie. So, this one was skipped for obvious reasons because we never got the versus movie or versus special between Megaforce and Samurai. That was definitely never happening for sure. But it's obvious why this one was skipped. But I like their design. Their design is really freaking cool. I freaking love it. But a shame it was never used in the show or even a special like how we got Clash of the Red Ranger. But anyway guys, what do you think of these monsters that never made it into Power Rangers Samurai? Love them, hate them, and how would you adapt these monsters into Power Rangers Samurai if you were working on the show? Tell me in the comment section down below. Now, the next edition of Never Before Seen Power Ranger Monsters is going to be a doozy because we are finally in Megaforce and Super Megaforce territory. And that video might have to be a two-parter with how many monsters were cut. I'm even struggling with how I want to work on that video because we kind of know why a lot of those monsters were cut with how Megaforce and Super Megaforce turned out. So right now I'm trying to think with how I can handle this video moving forward, but for now, I can't wait to start working on the Megaforce and the Super Megaforce video because it's been the most one in demand ever since I started this series because a lot of people know how many monsters were cut from that series and I'll probably go into that when I make the video. But anyway guys, with that said, I think I'm going to bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new and I will see you guys later. Peace out, take care, bye.